Hi everyone, my name is Malisha. In this video, we'll be adding metrics and plots to our DVC pipeline. As you can see, we have our current pipeline showing in the terminal, and I'll go ahead and close that and clear the terminal. Next, we'll need to add one more stage. To do that, head over to the docs website, and in the Get Started Metrics, Parameters, and Plot section, copy this first DVC run command and head back to your terminal and paste it. This is adding one more stage to our DVC YAML called Evaluate. This Evaluate stage is a little different from previous stages because we've added the metrics and plot sections. So we've done that down here with the dash M option and this scores.json file will contain our scalar values. And we've used the plots-no cache option to add a couple of plots files. So this will add plots files produced by this stage, but they won't be cached by DVC. What will happen is when we run our evaluate.py file, the scores.json file will have the rock, AUC, and average precision values written to it which you can see here. And this will also write the precision recall and threshold arrays to our PRC.json, which you can see here. Lastly, it will write the arrays for our rock curve into the rock.json file that you can see here. Now that we have the stage set up and we've gone over what these files do, let's take a look at our metrics. To see our metrics, we just have to run one more DVC command in the terminal. But first, I'm going to go ahead and clear the terminal. And now we'll run DVC metrics show. And you'll see this blurb here in the terminal that tells us what our average precision and our rock AUC values are, which correspond to exactly what we have in the scores.json. And now let's take a look at our plots. To do that, we'll run DVC plots show, and this generates a plots.html file that we'll go ahead and look at in the terminal. And one thing you'll notice is that right now DVC has selected the threshold and step for our axes values. This doesn't give us the information that we really need, so we'll come back to our terminal and we'll update these axes with a few commands. So first, we'll update the prc.json so that the axes for that are defined. We'll do that with dvc plots modify. And we'll use our prc.json. And we'll define our x-axis as being the recall value which you can see here in our prc.json file. And then we'll define the y-axis as the precision. And this command updates our evaluate stage in the dvc.yaml, which you can see here. Next, we'll do something similar for our rock.json. So you can see our raw values here but we'll run dvc plots modify roc.json and we'll define our x-axis as the fpr and our y-axis as the tpr. This also updates our evaluate stage and defines the x and y axes for this rock.json plot. Of course, you can always modify these files yourself. You don't have to do this through the DVC plots command. You can also change the title and other options that you have for um, graphs. So if we rerun DVC plots show, this will update that HTML file. And if you head back over to your browser and refresh the page, You'll notice that we have our new X and Y axes for both plots, and this shows us more interesting values of how our model changed over time. So now that we have our plots, we have our stage set up, this is a really great place to go ahead and commit some things to Git. 
So I'll clear the terminal and we will run git status to see all of the files. So we'll go ahead and add everything. So you can do that by running git add dot and we'll check the status again just to make sure these are the files we expect. And now we'll go ahead and commit them and say we created our evaluate stage. Okay, that commits everything that we have changed so far. And now we'll go over some things for our stage parameters. Before we start comparing iterations, let's talk about how DVC handles parameters. A lot of data science projects have config files where you update parameters and it reruns all of your stages or it starts your pipeline from the beginning. But with DVC, you're able to have granular control over how parameters affect your pipeline runs. So in our case, if you take a look at the featureize stage, and if you don't remember how this was generated, you can go back to the get started data pipeline section of the docs and you'll find the command for how this was created. But you'll see this param section here, and this corresponds to what's in our params.yaml. You'll notice we have this corresponding featureized section with our max features and ingrams defined. So what that means is whenever we change these featureized, um, these featureized parameters, that will only trigger the featureize and train stages to run. It won't re-trigger the prepare stage to run. That gives us more granular control over how we want to update our stages. So for example, if you wanted to change some of the parameters for the train stage, it would only run the train stage and it wouldn't trigger anything before that. So if we take a look at our curves again, you'll notice our AUC value really isn't all that great. So we're going to take advantage of this granular control and update a couple of things for our featureized stage. First, we'll increase the number of max features and we'll change our ingrams to two, making this a bigram. And now we'll go ahead and clear the terminal and we'll run DVC repro. You'll notice that it skipped the prepare stage and it's currently running the featureize stage. And once this is finished, it will run the train stage. Okay, now that we've rerun this, we have some things that we can compare. Since we've already committed our DVC lock and our DVC YAML, now that we have a new DVC repro, we can take a look at the difference between our previous iteration and this current one. So first I'll go ahead and clear out the terminal and let's take a look at how our params changed between the iteration before we did our commit and the iteration after we did our commit. To do that, we'll run DVC params diff and you'll see this these are the values, the new side are the values for our parameters after our git commit and the old values are the parameters before our git commit. So that's what we've changed in our params.yaml. So now let's take a look at how our metrics change between those two iterations. To do that, we'll run DVC metrics diff. And again, you'll notice our old values compared to our new ones and it gives us how much they've changed and lastly let's take a look at our plots so we'll run dvc plots diff and this will update that html file and if we go back to the browser and refresh you'll notice that we have this new curve so the old iteration is this blue curve. The new one is what we just got with our new parameters. And you'll see how our AUC value improved with our second run.